Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Three weaknesses in heaven. The Holy Spirit is the third one. So we dealt with the Father, the Word, and today the Holy Spirit. Here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it reads, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. What John is trying to help us with in his writing, which I think are, is so essential, is to show us the power by which we have the witness of the Father, the Word, and the Spirit concerning Jesus Christ being the Son of God and believing upon Him. Believing upon Him. You see, faith comes into us through Jesus. Faith that reconciles us to God. Faith that brings us in right standing with God. That we believe the witness the Father bears of His Son. That we believe the witness the Word bears of His Son. That we believe the Holy Spirit's witness concerning Jesus. You see, Jesus was in God. Jesus is God. Before the foundation of the world, all things, First John, John chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, all things were made by him. And then it says in Hebrews 11, by faith we understand that the things that are visible were not made by the things that can be seen, but by the word of God. And we could see there are three that bear witness from heaven concerning Jesus Christ, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. In Jesus, dear friends, we could see when Mary asked Gabriel, the angel, in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, how can this be? Verse 34, he says, Mary says to the angel Gabriel, how can this be when I do not know a man? And then in verse 35 of Luke chapter 1, Gabriel says, the Spirit of the Almighty will overshadow you. Let's read it for a moment. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Here you are. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And then he says, what's impossible with man is, then she says, for with, then the angel says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And she said, let it be to me according to your word. We know that Jesus Christ came physically there by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit bore witness of Jesus that he was with the Father and now was made manifest in flesh and blood. The Word was God and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld his glory, John chapter 1 verse 14. And we can see here how it's by the Spirit from heaven that Jesus there received the body. He says in Hebrews 10 verse 1, uh, Hebrews 10 verse 5, a body you have prepared for me. David in Psalm 139 also prophetically speaks about this body and the body is extremely important. And it's not immaterial to the true religion of Christianity, that we are just spiritually righteous with God, but the body is of no matter. No, no, the body is extremely important. The Heavenly Father himself, who is faithful, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, will sanctify our whole spirit, soul, and body, it says there. How is the body sanctified when in its nature of the flesh it has sinned? How can it be sanctified? Christ inside of us by His Spirit is our sanctification, our being made holy unto God, spirit, soul, and body. 
and the body in its self without God profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. But it is God manifest in the flesh that makes the body holy, that makes the body set apart to God. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, Do you not know that the body is the temple of God's Holy Spirit and is not your own? It has been bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, it says there. And it is through the spirit of life in us that the nature of sin in the flesh begins to die through the death of Christ being revealed in us and the spirit gives life to the flesh that's why we can feel the presence and power in our flesh the presence and power of God in our flesh but that presence and power is not of ourselves it is the treasure of Christ's life inside of us and this is the witness of the Holy Spirit it is the seal the guarantor, the mark of ownership that we have the spirit in the flesh. First Timothy 3 verse 16 says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God is revealed in the flesh. This is the Holy Spirit bearing witness of Jesus that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form. <clears throat> like a dove, it manifested upon him. And he had, this is John chapter 1, he had the spirit without measure, John chapter 3. And he was a body filled and flooded with God himself. That's why he could say, if you see me, you see the Father. However, Isaiah, I mean, this is interesting, I personally think, and it's needful for us to hear these things. In Isaiah chapter 53, <clears throat> it says in verse 2, he has no form or comeliness, no form, he has no stately form or splendor that we should desire him. Yes, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Yes, verse 2 of Isaiah 53. It wasn't what he was formed after the flesh. No, my friends. It wasn't his fleshly form that made him stately, that made him glorious. No, it was the spirit in him from heaven bearing witness of him that he is God that he is God manifest in flesh and blood, that when they see him, they see the Father. When they receive him, they receive the Father. It was God manifest in flesh and blood. That is the Spirit bearing witness from heaven. And this, my dear friends, is so violently important, so incredibly important that you know this and that you live in this reality in your heart. You see, Jesus Christ, from birth, the Holy Spirit bore witness of him. At his birth, at his inception, I should say, at his inception, the Holy Spirit bore witness of him. Yes? And then we can see also at his uh, death, the Holy Spirit bore witness of him. The Holy Spirit bore witness how at his death? I find this also for myself very important. It says, let's, let's go there for a moment to Hebrews chapter 9, okay? Hebrews chapter 9. And let's just read verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, here it comes, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse her, your conscience from that works to serve the living God, this is why when Jesus went into Gethsemane to pray, he was praying there three hours the same prayer. Not mine will, but thine will be done. Hebrews chapter 5 gives us a light to what else, to what really was happening in the spirit in that he shrank from the horror of being separated from the bright presence of the Father as he knew that the sacrifice he had to make to offer himself up to death to bear the punishment 
to bear the wrath of God against our sin. And that was so frightening to come under judgment when he lived under favor, to offer himself to pay the price for us. And he sweat drops of blood in agony and wept with many tears and loud cries to God, who was the only one who could save him from death, it says in Hebrews 5, verse 7 through 14. And it was in that agony that he interceded, yes, that by the Holy Spirit, by his eternal spirit, he offered himself without blemish. And this is vitally important for you to understand that what Jesus did in his suffering and in his death, he did by the Holy Spirit enabling him to offer himself. That's why his sacrifice was so intensely sweet. Why is this important? Yes, it is that Jesus opened a new life-giving way for us through the veil Hebrews 10 talks about, through the offering of himself. Yes, and by that one sacrifice of himself, he forever makes perfect all of you and me who come to God through him. You see, when God's wrath was there, which is death, the offering of Jesus to surrender himself to death in thine hands I commit my spirit was so sweet to the Father. It had no resentment. It had no, no bitterness, no anger. No, it was sweet. Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. I surrender myself. I surrender myself to the judgment. I accept the penalty of sin. I agree sin must be judged. Sin is wrong. I agree with you. I take the responsibility. I offer myself without blemish. I bear the punishment. That sacrifice was so sweet that he satisfied God's wrath and he satisfied the demands of the law that the soul that sins must die. So thereby he took away the charge of the law against man and he took away the wrath against man. Jesus took away our sin in himself. Oh, my friends, the witness of the Spirit from heaven is there at his birth. The witness of the Spirit is there in his suffering. The witness from heaven of his Spirit is there in his resurrection. Right here in Romans chapter one, it says, Romans chapter one, verse four, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. There is not at any time any lack of witness from heaven concerning Jesus in his becoming flesh and blood, becoming a man, in his suffering for us, in his resurrection. It is the Spirit from heaven bearing witness that Jesus Christ is who he is. And that same Spirit that we see perfected in Jesus is now brought to us through Jesus. And now we have the Spirit of life in Christ as a living hope in our bosom calling us up to heaven, knowing that heaven is now our home, that God is our Father, and that we have the spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father coming into us through Jesus Christ. And we live in this reality by the Holy Spirit, and it is so forcefully powerful that no matter what weakness we suffer in the flesh, we live by the Spirit. We live by this life-giving Spirit. And when it's our turn, to surrender our body over to the grave so that we may enter into our heavenly abode and not be found naked before God, but be clothed with Jesus Christ in garments white as snow of perfect righteousness, peace and joy before the Father through the Son. Oh, he who prepared us for this very thing is God himself, that to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. What a glory, what a glory that we will be clothed with Christ himself, that his heavenly life, his holy life in the Father 
is radiant within us, which is our heavenly body, until we come with him down from heaven and are given a new earthly body that knows no sin, in which the spirit of our life in him reigns and rules with perfect righteousness together with him, with perfect peace and joy between the heaven and earth, bringing the glory of heaven into the created realm as it always is meant to be had meant to be before the fall of man and seeing the holy heavenly life that we have in the father manifest in flesh and blood and in all of creation and romans 8 says that all of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of god so that itself may be liberated from the curse that holds it friends wow there are three that bear witness from heaven the father the word and the spirit amen have a good